Hi, everyone. Welcome to Como Live. And this week, we are celebrating Polar Bears International and also Polar Bear Week. So we're going to do a little bit of a training session here. We'll talk a little bit about polar bears. We'll get a chance to see the training session, and I'll tell you kind of why we train here and what we're doing, and uh, tell you a little bit about polar bears in the wild and how we care for the bears here at the zoo. So up here we have Neil. Neil was born in 1995. He will turn 25 years old on December 9th. He is a little over a thousand pounds, so about a thousand, I want to say 70 right now. Um, we are taking him down a little bit. We like him a little closer to a thousand pounds. So he's on a wee bit of a diet right now. Uh, so you can see with his training treats, he's not getting as much lard. He's getting some lettuce. He's getting a uh, a little bit of a kind of like a mushed feline diet there for training. Oh, but we're getting a weight on him, so let's see where he's at now. I thought that said 1040, um, so I don't know if you can tell, but right up top uh, there you can see that there's a scale head, and then right in the floor is the scale itself, and so we just ask the bear to stand on the scale and we can get a weight. So it looks like our diet is working and he is coming down. Uh, just because of his age, he's a little bit older, we'd like to keep him a little closer to a thousand pounds. That's a little better for his joints. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. He, <laughs> he's doing really good right now. He's trying to, he's trying to get him to target. Uh, the reason we train here is for health care and, uh, and management of these animals. So you can see he's standing on there right now and it is 140, 140. So I think he was on all the way. So it is 140. But again, we train here for health and management. We can ask him to get on a scale. We can ask him to open his mouth. Uh, we've got toothbrushes. We can brush the front of their teeth. Uh, we can ask them to do eye presents. We can put medications in. We see how well their joints are. We ask them behaviors like up and rise. That was the up behavior right now. And he's getting a little bit of the treat for that. Um, then that's actually got some medication in it. So not just a treat, but as he gets older, he has a little bit of arthritis. Again, why we want to keep you know his weight down just a little bit. Um, and he does uh, get a little bit of medication for that. But then we can also monitor everything by doing blood draws. And right here, these metal things are what we call our blood sleeves. We can ask him to lay down and put his paws in that blood sleeve, and then they can do a blood draw on him. Uh, and then we do that about every three months or so, and we can get a good blood profile on him and make sure everything is working just fine. Um, so again, he's 24 years old right now. He'll turn 25 in December, and that's getting up there for a polar bear. Here in the zoo, we hope for mid to late 20s with these guys. The average lifespan in the wild is about 20 years. Uh, so, so he is an older bear, um, but he is doing really, really well right now, especially for being an older bear. Um, so training is one way that we care for him. Uh, in the wild, these guys would, uh, they would normally eat ring seals and they go out and they hunt all winter long and they build up a lot of fat uh, hunting and mostly they're going to eat the fat off the ring seals and then when the ice recedes in the spring, they come back onto land and they have to survive during that time on land. And um, so hopefully they've built up enough fat to do that. They're still going to feel hungry. And that hunger uh, is satiated by kind of going around, eating some berries, eating some kelp or other plants. They might come across a nest of eggs. They might, um, they might find, you know, a, a reindeer or, you know, anything else that they could possibly opportunistically come across to eat. But again, that's just to keep their bodies full, uh, their bellies full. Uh, most of the time, you know, they depend on that fat uh, that they build up over the winter time in order to survive the summer times. Um, you know, most people think these guys are on ice all year round. That's not true for all populations of polar bears. In fact, the largest population in Churchill, Canada, is on the ice in the winter, and then the ice recedes in the summer, and they come onto <clears throat> onto land. 
So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's, the way, uh, that's the way their wild diet works. So we try to mimic that a little bit here uh, in the zoo world as well. So we feed them a lot more of the fattier meats. We want them to fatten up a little bit more in the winter. Um, like I say, he'd be more like a thousand pounds or so for him in the winter time. And then in the spring and summer, we'll thin him down to about 900 or so pounds. So for him, about a hundred pound difference between summer and winter. Um, and we feed him mostly, uh, so he'll get a, a mixed diet. Uh, we don't feed him our pinnipeds. Um, we, our seals are safe. Uh, but we do feed him uh, meaty bones once a week. He gets a natural prey like a rabbit. He gets produce, as you see here, and that's a lot of filler for him. They, they do really like that romaine lettuce. Um, but we do feed that produce to keep his belly full, especially, you know, if we're taking him down in diet, we don't want him to feel hungry. He gets, um, he gets polar bear chow, which is specially made for polar bears. It's um, a marine-based type diet, uh, fish and other things that are in it, but it's got vitamins that they need. It's like we said, dog chow, but for polar bears, a polar bear chow. Um, we give them uh, fish, so they get a mix of Sometimes salmon, sometimes a little bit of trout, capelin, herring. Um, today he had some mackerel for breakfast. Um, so they do get fish as well. Um, and they also get a feline diet. Uh, it's a meat, ground meat, just like our large cat carnivores get as well. And then we also give lard. And lard is super fat. So you think in the wild, you know, they're gonna eat uh, ring seals and they're mostly eating that blubber off of ring seals. Um, so here what we do is we give lard and it sometimes it's just the rendered pig fat from a local farm or it is also just the store-bought lard but there's about 4,000 calories to the pound in that so that does add a lot of calories to their diet so you know, we use that sparingly, sparingly and usually only for training sessions especially you know when we're asking uh, you know a, a behavior like blood draw which you can see he's put his paws in there as well and and now he's just hanging out waiting to see if we've got anything else for him. So, yeah. So Kelsey, what, what else should I, what else would you like me to talk about with the bears? Can you talk about wild polar bears and maybe how someone here in Minnesota at home, what people can do to help them? Oh, sure, you bet. So polar bears are facing some challenges out there in the wild. Um, there's estimated uh, the, IUCN Red List, which lists your threatened and endangered animals, they estimate there's about 26,000 out there in the wild. There's a more recent study done in 2018 that's estimating 23,000. It's really hard to estimate polar bears because it's really some of them live in really remote areas. They're all up in the Arctic. Um, we do have polar bears in Alaska, um, which is the only place in the U.S. that there are polar bears. But there's you know polar bears in Canada and Russia and a number, there's five different countries that polar bears live up in the Arctic. And some of those places are remote. So it's really hard to actually study them and get a good count on them. But the best counts they have are somewhere between 23,000 and 26,000 left in the wild. And like I said, you know, earlier, they depend on the sea ice to hunt all winter long. And those ones that live up far, far north, they're on ice most of the year. But the ones that live further south, especially the ones in Canada, um, they depend on the ice to freeze over in the winter. And so climate change is having a real big impact on these guys. And to understand what I mean by climate change, basically the earth has a layer of natural gases around it that keeps us at a livable temperature. Without those gases, we'd be really cold. So when we burn excess fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas, we add to that blanket of gases up in the atmosphere and thicken it, and that traps more air. Well, oceans also absorb that extra heat and they're trying, as they're trying to balance out uh, the climate uh, and the temperatures of the earth. So you've got the atmosphere heating up and the oceans warming as well. So what that translates to for these bears is that a, it, the ice in, uh, at least in the uh, Canadian areas are forming about two weeks later in the winter and receding about two weeks earlier currently in the summer on average. And that translates into about a month less of hunting time for these guys in the wild. 
And so again, an average size bear needs approximately 45 to 50 seals a winter in order to be able to build up enough fat to survive in the summertime. So you can imagine what taking away a month of hunting time does for these guys. It really does make it challenging. But to go back, there's a lot of things that we can do in order to help these guys just right here. And curbing our uh, fossil fuel use is a big thing there. So whether that's we choose to use public transportation, we lobby for more and better public transportation, whether we um, do things that are large, a large collective actions like that will make a huge difference. Um, we can choose to ride our bikes instead of using the car when we're taking short trips. You know, we can make those good choices. We can also do things around the house like turning down our thermostats in the winter time and putting on the ugly sweaters or turning them up in the summertime and wearing some short shorts, whatever, you know, makes you happy uh, to do that. But curbing our heating and cooling costs and, and use will also help reduce the amount of extra gases that we're putting into the atmosphere and slow those changes down. So there's plenty of things like that that we can do to help these bears in the wild. And also educating ourselves. Like I said, you know, Polar Bears International, they have a great website out there. You can go and check them out and learn a lot more about these wonderful animals out there on their website and ways that you can help and also participate in some of these conservation initiatives that they've got going. Any other questions? I don't think so. All right. All right, well, with that, Neil and I will uh, sign off and uh, hope you take a peek out there. Come here and visit Neil. Go over to Polar Bears International's website. Check them out there, too, and see what you can learn about polar bears.